Welcome to the Antiquities Travel Guide. Follow us to different countries as we search for ancient artifacts. If you too wish to explore the ancient past through travel, we'll help you plan where to go, what to see, and how to best enjoy what you encounter. In this series of the ATG, you can accompany Marisa and me on our trek through England, homeland of the ancient Angles, Saxons, Romans, and Celtic Britons. Come on, let's go. After a pleasant stay in Ancient near Oxford, we drove a short distance to Devizes because I wanted to visit the Wiltshire Museum. So we're here at the Wiltshire Museum here in Devizes. What's cool about this museum is that it has a pretty detailed history starting from the Stone Age all the way to modern time. As you walk through the museum, you get to see some pretty cool artifacts from around the area, including some from Avebury and Stonehenge. It's small, a Category 3, but because it has material on Stonehenge and Avebury, I thought it would be great to come here and get a little background before we visit those sites. The cost is £5.50. You can see everything relatively quickly, probably in a half hour. The prehistoric gallery tells the story of the people who built and used the monuments of Stonehenge and Avebury. Unique gold and amber objects date back over 4,000 years to the Bronze Age. They've got the famous Bush Barrow Lozenge, Bush Barrows at Stonehenge. These things were actually worn by the chieftains and shamans who held ceremonies at Stonehenge. We've got some Iron Age objects as well, Roman artifacts. There are fun activities for the whole family here. I had fun trying to build a small version of Stonehenge, but it was harder than I thought. Up on the first floor is an Anglo-Saxon gallery, which we also took a look at. From there, we took a short drive northeast to Avonbury, the site of a Neolithic henge, containing the largest known megalithic stone circle in the world. It originally had more than 600 stones, but only a fraction of them are still standing. Most Americans are familiar with Stonehenge, which we'll be visiting later today, but Avonbury, although not as iconic, has a couple of advantages over Stonehenge. One is that it's a lot more accessible. You can actually walk up to the stones and touch them. Another is that it's free to visit, though there is a small charge for parking and another for the museum. The Avonbury site sits in a quaint little English village with thatched cottages, making the atmosphere around here very pleasant. What is a henge exactly? It's a type of earthwork constructed in the Neolithic period, commonly consisting of a circular or oval bank with a ditch on the inside of the bank going around it. They were not made that way for defensive reasons. It had a ritualistic purpose. There were usually between one and four entrances to a henge. Henges don't have to have structures, but they often did. Could be stone, timber, or a cove. Avabury had no fewer than three circles of megaliths on its henge. The site was in use roughly between 2850 and 2200 BCE. Here we are at the entrance to the henge. The two largest stones here uh, were placed at the entrances, probably to be more impressive. Uh, we were talking about like what the purpose of this henge could be, and no one really knows for sure. But one thing that we can say is that the way it is arranged suggests that it was shaped for rituals that involved inclusion, exclusion, and procession. Some people think that this is a kind of public theater, you might say, that gave physical expression to the world order as they saw it, and to people's place within that order, and to their relationship with the gods, and expressing the nature and transmission of authority, whether that be political or spiritual. Because the Henge was built over a period of 600 years, the nature of their beliefs and their rituals may have changed over time, and as they modified this place, it coincided with their changing beliefs. The National Trust Avabury, who manages the Henge, also care for the Alexander Keeler Museum, which has two separate galleries, the Stables Gallery, which has a wonderful display of the archeological finds from the area, and the Barn Gallery, which has interactive displays in a children's area too. Tickets are £5.60 per adult, but National Trust or English Heritage members can get in free. Of all the henges with a stone circle in Britain, none is more famous than Stonehenge. 
Entrance is free for members of English Heritage or the National Trust. You have to pay otherwise. £17.50. These five structures are reconstructions of actual dwellings found at Durrington Walls, based on the archaeological evidence. Each one had stake-built walls, a hearth, and a chalk floor. Some of them had evidence of furniture in them. Carbon dating has shown that these houses were inhabited for about 50 to 100 years, around 2500 BCE. To get to the stone circle, you have a choice to either take a shuttle or walk it. We decided to take the hike because we wanted to get a feel for the entire site. To be precise, when we speak of Stonehenge, we're referring to more than just the stone circle. The site of Stonehenge includes over 700 known archaeological features, including several henges, timber structures, enclosures, and many burial mounds. Long before the famous stone circle was constructed, Salisbury Plain, which is where this is, was considered a sacred area. There was a lot of game, so that may be one of the reasons why people took to this place. The burial mounds, dozens of them, indicate that hundreds of people were buried here from a very early date. A burial chamber called a long barrow, about 85 feet long, was found. It contained many skeletons dating to about 3700 to 3500 BCE. They call it the House of the Dead. It was discovered in 2017. Two Cursus monuments, the Greater Cursus and the Lesser Cursus, basically these were earthwork trenches, were built around 3500 BCE. Stonehenge must be around here somewhere. The earliest version of the famous henge at Stonehenge dates to about 3000 BCE and it comprised a ditch bank and what are called the Aubrey Holes, round pits that form a circle. There may have been stone or timber posts in them at one time. Then in the mid third millennium BCE, a double circle of blue stones was created. They're called that because when they get wet, they have a bluish tint. Many of these are still here. They weigh about four tons each. And here's the thing. They probably came from southwestern Wales, at least 140 miles away. The method by which they were transported here is not exactly known. Around that same time, the entrance was widened and the heel stone put in place. The first 1600 feet of the avenue from Stonehenge is made on the axis of the summer solstice sunrise and winter solstice sunset. Say that 10 times fast. We still don't know the precise reason that alignment was made. Was it for sun worship? Calendar keeping? These are just educated guesses. Then in the late third millennium BCE, the largest of the stones, the Sarsen stones, were brought here. They're 30 feet tall and weigh about 25 tons each and probably came from Marlborough Downs near Avebury, about 20 miles away. They had to have been brought over land and it would have required about 500 men to pull them on sledges with ropes and another 100 men to lay huge rollers in front of the sledge. One set of these stones was erected in the shape of a horseshoe and another set were placed in a circle around that. Every pair of stones having a stone lintel placed over the top to connect them. The houses from Durrington that I showed you earlier were dated to this time. So that means that the people who occupied the houses were involved in the construction of the Sarsen stones. After the Sarsen stones were brought here, the blue stones were rearranged into rings, one inside the Sarsen horseshoe and another between the horseshoe and the outer layer of Sarsen stones. Many of these blue stones are now missing. After 2000 BCE, the monument fell into disuse. Some of the stones toppled over, others were taken away. We took the shuttle back, that saved some time. If you like merch, there's a cool store with all kinds of Stonehenge souvenirs. Where to now? 
Well, we're staying the night on the beautiful Isle of Wight. So we drove south through New Forest National Park and hopped on a ferry at Lymington, which took us and our car across the water to Yarmouth. We were really hungry by this point, but it was getting late and there weren't many places open in Yarmouth. But we did find an Italian restaurant called Cucina, and the food there was delicious. Then it was a drive across the island to our Airbnb in Shanklin. Tomorrow is a big day. We're visiting some ruins on the island, then the great Porchester Castle, and the remains of a Roman palace in Fishbourne. If you'd like to come along, please hit the subscribe button and the bell you'll be notified when the video is posted. Thanks for watching. See you next time.